All right. This is the orchard. The tree house is up there in those trees, right up here. But this is the orchard. And he has these three big bit, bit planting beds here. But he says he's not gonna do all of them. One of them's for corn. And I'm up here, supposedly helping him plant corn. I can't, it's noon or something like that. <clears throat> I was hoping he'd be done, but he's been waiting for me. Right up there, see that little building way up there? That's the pump house for the water. And he has automatic sprinklers up here that are battery operated. And the pump, the well is down up there, but it pumps to here. So every summer he has to turn on the water and the electricity to run it. I think, I always say thing wrong. All right, around down here is the asparagus. So he's picking asparagus. And those windows, he had some kind of greenhouse up here at one time. And he'll tell you what all these bushes are. But I don't know what they are. Because I don't know. Now I think, is this my horseradish right here? The wind's blowing, so. That's horseradish. This is rhubarb. Oh yeah, here's the asparagus growing. I'm glad I got here to film you picking it. You didn't bring one of the pink ones? I got them in there, but I... Do you want me to get them? No, I want to save them to pick that glass. And did you notice somebody dumped a big load of garbage down there? Well, the burnable stuff's Chad's. Is it? Yeah, that bed frame, the wood and stuff, I oh, think... That's Chad's. As long as you know who did it. I don't know about the bathtub. He wouldn't have had a bathtub. Well, that bathtub was dumped earlier. Yeah, I know, and I don't know who did that. Now, some of them, well, you have to leave to go to sea. Isn't that right, Jane? Well, all these little ones I'm leaving. This stuff should have been picked earlier. I'm having to cut it a little bit long. How are your knees? Well, the main part of the asparagus is all the way down. No, I said, how are your knees? My knees. Does it hurt them? Hurt right now, a little. Look, look at dandelions growing right in here in your garden way. Um, but here's, um, some people don't know how the asparagus grows. And it looks really weird, doesn't it? What we'll have to do is... From now on out, I'll let all this small stuff grow now. Yeah. And then... Uh, see, all along, you probably can't see, but there's little sprigs all along of the small stuff that will go to seed. But and pretty soon I'll have to start leaving the bigger stuff too. Oh, you will? Yeah. You'll have to tell Todd that so they don't pick them. Uh, it's so hard to get up and down, I just... Just stay down. It's easier just to crawl along. Oh, look, these are strawberries that right you're growing. I think. Jamie will tell you about all these bushes because I don't know what they are. And you can see he has the tall fence so the deer, elk, antelope. We don't have any antelope. I was just kidding. Why is this board here? Oh, I was using it for target practice last year. Oh, I thought it was for shade. Because I'd sit right down there in the shade. Okay, all I've got is a few scattered... Is that rhubarb? Yeah. How come it's going to seed? And I didn't even pick any. On top there, that blossomy stuff? I know, that needs to be cut off. Well, I, I never up. didn't... How come I never have any re rhubarb to... They probably got cook or anything. 10 pounds of asparagus here now already. Okay, let's show the bucket. It's pretty heavy. Don't worry, we can give it away. I'm sorry for the wind. Crammed in there so tight, I can't make it. Fall down. I'm sorry the wind is blowing so much that it's going to interfere with the talking. Most of the 
days are getting so long I'm having to cut them. You look like a farmer. I'm having to cut them off a little higher. He never hears anything I said. Yes, I heard you say I look like a farmer. But he just, you just don't answer? I only answer if it's... Because you are a farmer. I only answer if it's comment worth commenting. Now why are you cutting those off? Tell me. Because those are the seed heads. And, and you don't want it to go to seed? Why did you take it off? I don't have any idea why. Well, once it starts putting its nourishment into seed heads, it won't grow anymore. Well, are you gonna, is there any to pick to make a pie? Yeah, there's all these bigger ones here. Look how come it's so green. I want red. They do have different kinds. horseradish and then it seeded here and then it seeded one over there in the garden and I dug that one up in the garden and brought it home. See this shoot there? And they go wrinkled that way they get frozen. Maybe oh. cut them just so they won't keep sapping nourishment from the root. Oh. You're stepping on some. If they're too skinny and tall, skinny and tall, I'll leave them. By the end of June, you have to stop picking it and leave it all. So we can keep taking. These frames right here, that's part of his, when he had the greenhouse up here. They're trampoline frames. You can make a greenhouse out of trampoline frames if anyone wants to. Okay, I think this is, I think I've got one more plant over there. I wanted to get farther along ready to plant here. What are these trees over here, all those trees? What kind are they? This is choke cherry. Quaking aspens. Now take them choke cherries. Choke cherry, quaking aspens, and service berries. Choke cherries really do make you choke when you eat them. You have to put a lot of sugar. Okay. Oh, all right. Now the, the camera's rolling, so come and tell them that what you want to tell them about the orchard. And you'll have to hold it up close to your mouth to talk because it's windy. Well, I got one more plant of asparagus to pick first, and then I'm. Where is it at? Right over here. Well, can you. You want. These bushes by the car, and this one, they're honey, honey bear, uh, berries. And then I planted four smaller ones over there last year. Those are a. Uh, it's still in the honeyberry family, but they're called hassocks. And they, a lot of the Canadian ha they come out of Canada. And I've got two little bird houses here I gotta get put up. That's important. Where's your hat? No, I haven't put it on yet. Oh, look, you have a violet growing in your. I should dig that up and take it home and transplant it in a thing. Because it does, it's not supposed to grow. What's going to be growing in these? Anything? Those are all planted with potatoes. They should be starting to come up, but they're getting awful slow coming up for some What's this dead thing here? Well, it wasn't dead last year. It's, a, it's an autumn olive. And this bush right here is a raisinberry and then the ones behind it right over here are high bush cranberries let me pick the rest of this asparagus no, I've only got a few here how did you why did you plant it over here I didn't it <laughs> seeds itself everywhere I know I'm kidding I'm just kidding potato garden I dug a lot of it up and brought it up and transplanted it around her house. I wished I could soak these in water. I didn't realize this bucket has a Holes. break in the bottom. I was gonna fill it with water to keep
keep the asparagus. Yeah, they'd wash it good then, rinse it. It's a strainer now. But I know, if, but it'll all weld if it doesn't well, keep I'm in the water. Well, I'm going to go sooner than you, so I will take it with me in my car, and I will wash it when I get home. It needs to be soaked in some nice cold. There's an asparagus plant growing right there, too. Asparagus, is, there's one up there. Oh, my, they're just growing like weeds. They grow everywhere. They kind of grow like weeds if you let them well, let, let them spread. Them. It'll feed the honey. Asparagus hungry. is the easiest plant there is to grow. It's like a weed? It's almost like a weed. Like bamboo. Is it a bamboo family? No. Oh, sorry. Bamboo I, I don't is know in anything. the grass. Bamboo is actually the biggest grass. Okay. Look, I'm actually wearing ten shoes. And Are then, you surprised? Hey, Jimmy. Wait, listen. Are you surprised I'm wearing tennis shoes? You don't see me in tennis shoes ever, do you? I don't you? see you out here helping very much either, so. <laughs> That's why my tennis shoes look so good. This silvery colored bush. <clears throat> all the bushes when I'm playing. Yeah. That one is uh, buffalo berry. And then in this square, I had a bunch of uh, grape berry. Uh, trying to think what the names of them were. There was a bunch of grape type berries and I had a few of them that stayed alive for four or five years, but they're slowly dying out. Look at, you have a ton of violets right here growing, why? Oh, well, I want to transplant them to flower beds. Uh, just let them spread. If you're gonna spray them. And then these trees right here, uh, pear trees, and then in the middle over here down there are my uh, uh, purple and yellow plums, and then on that side of the plums are all apricots, and then all my apple trees are all over down there, and these strawberries here, the Ogallala, they're the ones that at one time I was able to pick about 87 gallons of one year. I wanted to find out how many I was making and I counted them. And uh, Plus he topped them all. He sold them to people topped. I said, let them do their own. Well, I topped them and put them in bags and ready for the freezer. But here's a tube I freezer. These tubes were put out to kill the voles. Tell how you do that. Say, see it's got poison grain in and usually I'd put them with a little put them downhill so the no water runs up in them make sure your poisons clear in and then if you have a bunch of runs where the voles and mice and stuff are running you can put this in there and they'll they like these holes to go in and investigate and they'll go in there and find the poison I've already gathered up about... Do they die days. in the tunnel? No, they'll eat them and run off somewhere. Oh, good. And then once in a while, the voles will get smart. Maybe they won't eat enough to kill them or something, and they'll make them sick. And then they will... They'll... I'll come back the next spring, and they will have dug dirt and pushed dirt in and plugged the... Oh, to protect their species? So they won't... Let their babies go in and eat it. Are they smart? Well, if they get trained. All right, let's keep, are you gonna show anything else up here? Where's your raspberries? Well, my raspberry patch has a problem in it over here, but let me take this over. To, let's run back and get the bucket too. Let's just come back this way. Why are we getting the bucket? Why do we have to carry the bucket over there? I'll go down the raspberry. This, see, he mows the lawn here. So he brings the lawnmower from home up here. But he wants to leave the lawnmower up here and buy a new one for the house. But you have to have money to do that. Because we have to have a ride on. Because you could never, you'd have to be really young and frisky to mow this all with a push mower. 
I wouldn't do it. There's some strawberries there. <clears throat> I just, you just spit on camera. Okay, well, come on down here. I thought we were going down the middle one. This is the sprinkler system, and it has a box in there for automatic on battery sprinkler. This is another honeyberry. And I thought I, yeah, I can see a little one growing over there. I've, I've got, there's so many different kinds of honeyberries. I tried to get a bunch of them. What do we do with honeyberries? I never had them. Look at this. What? What? That's the disease? Now these are leaf eating caterpillars. Oh. And they get on the. I didn't even see it. There's a whole bunch of them on here. Are they going to kill the whole bush? Well, they'll eat. If they keep growing, they'll strip Shouldn't it. Shouldn't you step on that and kill them? Uh, sometimes. Maybe they're far enough away they won't find their way back. And then Don't they this, fly or something? In this square, I was supposed to have my cherries, but then we... Oh, there's asparagus over there. Big one. Anyway... I planted, I used to have some nice, great big, I had a Montmorency cherry and a North Star. Uh, I think this was maybe a start off the Montmorency, I don't know. And then there's Bali cherry, which is a real super hardy, but all the cherries are pie cherries. And there's a couple of sweet cherries that are supposed to grow in the upper part of zone four. And I planted them in that square over there where the strawberries or that plastic or ground cover white stuff is. We have a cherry a tree at home too. How I many do we need? About this current. Uh, this current seeded itself with the current bush over here and it's wait called, wait for the wind to stop. They can't hear when you talk with the wind. And it's called a Randall cherry. And these Randalls are a black, or not Randall cherry, Randall uh, currant. And the Randall currant has a real musky flavored berry that's just weird. And some people think it's even nasty tasty. Others are just think it's really weird. I need to sell that. So every time I bring the grandkids up here in this bush gets the chest. See, it's got blossom. It's going to have its How lucky. berries. How lucky. Anyway, I'll bring them up and I'll say, here, try these currants. <laughs> they eat them and they all gag and spit them out. Well, why do you grow them if they're so horrible? Well, I didn't know that Randall currants were that way, but the description of them does say that they're real musky tasting berry. And then all the way down this row over here, I have a lot of different kinds of currants. Looks like we got, most of those have gone to seed. What are these trees? And these are the apple trees. I think we have about 20. I had one or two apples up here that got, well, they got damaged by the rabbits before we had the rabbit fence put up. And then they lived for quite a few years, but. The last year or two, a couple of them have died on me. Shouldn't you prune them? Well, they need to be pruned, but I can't keep up with everything. Why? Because <laughs> I don't help him. And then my yellow, this was all yellow raspberries over in this side. All right, let us, let me tell you about yellow raspberries. And the yellow raspberries have almost died out on me here. Good, because they, you don't grow yellow ones for a reason. They're yummy, but they fall apart, and they make ugly jam. Yeah, they look kind of like baby poop when you make them into jam. And when if you get any in with the red, it just looks like wrong. Well, it ruins the red ones, too. And then the wasps love them. And when you're picking them, there's a million wasps all over you. Cause well, that's because they're real sugary and sweet. Come over here. So I don't care if we don't have any of those. And then I've got... You know, things like these, this almost looks like one of those Randall. They might spread worse than the other currants. 
Yeah, because the nasty things grow better. Yeah, Weeds grow well, better than good things. These little service berry bushes spread everywhere, too. Do you want them? No. <clears throat> Those are service berries right there behind us. Look through the fence. In the wild. And they're in bloom right now. And I've got a nesting little wren right over there that was scolding me all the time I was picking the asparagus. What'd you do? Just We still it. have snow, that much snow on the mountain. And this is my, I used to have a real nice patch right here of red raspberries. I remember. And then we overwatered it here and it was nothing but bog. Uh, this area right through here had all the dirt scraped off. And it's down to almost clay. And the clay's impermeable and won't let the water in, so the water just sets on top. And it rotted them? And I don't know if that... It seemed like they survived that for quite a few years, but then raspberries have two main diseases, or, or not diseases, but two main uh, insects that'll get into it. One's called a crown borer, and one's called a cane borer. And if you get like a new cane like this, the cane borers will bore little holes in about this high up, from the end yeah and then this end will die well can't you cut it off and then you have to cut these off and burn them to get rid of the insects that are doing it well is this <clears throat> why is this like here well it's winter kill it needs to be all these tops a lot of times the tops don't survive the winter too good and i get you get a little bit of die back here on these tops they need to just be taken off yeah but anyway, the problem that we have up here, and I don't have this problem on my raspberries at home, but there's a, the other problem is the crown borer, and it's some kind of an insect that'll lay its eggs on the bottom of the leaves, and then when the eggs hatch, the little grubs fall down into the soil and they crawl around, and then they just eat the raspberry off right at the top of the crown. How do you kill them? Well, once I, you'll have a nice green, well, they won't do these old stems. They only do the new stems. But you'll get a nice brand new stem all growing out and it's growing really good. And then you come back a few, a week later and it's starting to wilt and die. And you shake it and it just falls off because it's oh, been chewed root. off at the bottom. Oh, no. And those are the crown borers. And we started to get them in here. I think we've got some natural plant out here that's a host to the crown borer and bugs that, because not everybody has raspberries for them to get in. So they've got some kind of a natural other plant that they're feeding on here. And then they All just, right. they started down on one end and just started to destroy the patch. This year they'll get this one? Well, not necessarily. I'm starting to get a few raspberries down all the way along yeah, again. Yeah, regrowth. But, you know, this is where Robinson Crusoe will be, should be applied. Do you know what that means? My mm. Robinson Crusoe theory? That's where you get an old raccoon hat or something. No, 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 act no, like no, your Robinson no, Crusoe, no, 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 no. You can't put everything in one spot. Your gunpowder your raspberries, you don't put everything in one spot because if it destroys, you're out of luck. You put them in all different places. Well, right now, we don't even need these raspberries. No, we've got plenty at home. The house are giving us... Like the pretty blossoms. Tons. What's this one? Oh, it's some kind of apple. How come it has blossoms on this side? Oh, it's a different tree than this side? Look, that one doesn't have any <coughs> blossoms. And well, last year... On these where they're a double tree... These are ones where the rabbits ate them off and I thought they were dead, so they um, replanted. And then the stems came back. Yeah. These two right here, I don't know if they got a some kind of a bug in the bark or something. This one here was doing real sickly last year. And now are you gonna put, chop it down? And that one's bit sickly too. That, that one over there was the way this one was last year. And yeah, stuff like this will have to be ripped out of here and got rid of. 
And then our little purple one over here. See the little pink? Yeah, we got that one pink one. That one's called a firecracker crab apple. Why would you plant a crab apple? Well, they're about two inch in diameter crabs and they're bright red. Yeah, but are they good? Yeah, you can make applesauce out of them. You can make oh, we have so much applesauce in the pantry. We don't even eat it. One. See, last year the blossoms froze, well, so we some, didn't get any apples. Some years we get winter kill and some years we don't. The last year the what are those, Dad? Those were the uh, uh, elderberries. And last year they did really good, and they didn't winter kill last year, winter, or the year before. And that's why they grew up and had nice big bushes. But this year they almost look like they're all totally winter killed. And then I planted a couple other varieties. Of... Do you know what we call that? The destroying angel. Yeah, the destroying angel gets us sometimes. He's always out to destroy you, Mother Nature. And Maybe there are these two little bushes right here, Arona berries. How come you never bring them home and well, pick them? Well, you have to cook them and everything. Uh, tart and astringent. Good. Don't bring them home. Look, what are these leeks or onions? Well, we have leeks growing wild up here. Look how many we got over here now. Are we gonna eat them? Well, I usually don't do much with them. What's that ugly yellow bush over there? Those are the cur currants and gooseberries. And uh, I have some Joshua berries, which is a cross between the currant and the goose. Everything berry. that you can can, you have to put so much sugar with it to make it good. And we don't need that. so We, we don't need the sugar in our diet. So and we just don't pick them even. Then, uh, two years ago, I transplanted a ton of the suckers and stuff off my raspberries at home and oh, I, yeah. I put dirt in here this this is all I packed it in here with the tractor and we put it in here because we're so close to this clay ground that I think we waterlogged and I thought maybe she put good dirt put some dirt here and raise the plants up a little bit look you need to plant a few new ones well here. I planted this whole thing last year Two years some of them ago. don't take. And then some of them didn't take, and then we've had a couple winter kills. But we're getting a few of them that's starting to take, so. Okay, so then what's down at the bottom here, the very end? He doesn't care about it much, I don't think. I do. Oh, sorry. And this was a special bought. Uh, Why'd you plant it right Canadian in the walkway? Canadian service berry. Well, that's one of the first things I put in for. I knew what I was doing. Oh. And then this down here, I'm trying to get some uh, Latham raspberries going. Oh, yeah, I see. There are and, some growing. And you have some strawberries. Yeah, these these are a special strawberry, but I forgot what they were now. Oh, no. That's why you have to label everything, because you think you can remember, but you never can. I thought you especially would remember. Well, I think they were something like a white strawberry or... What is this white bush here with blossoms? It looks dead. Looks like it's got those little... Oh, it does have worms. ...in it too. The cobweb worms. And these were some kind of... Uh, well, I had a two trees growing right here, which were the Sophia... One of them was called the Sophia mountain ash it's a russian version where they've crossed mountain ash and pears or mountain ash with apples and this is a mountain ash uh, there's a couple of the russian types of mountain ashes that have more of an edible berry than the ones we grow here wild in the united states the mountain ash here in the united states is even the birds hardly will eat it until they're starving in the winter, then they'll... <clears throat> but the mountain ash here around, the berries do hang good into the winter, so it does make a wildlife food. And everything's really dry because we don't have our water. I just well, barely got it turned on yesterday. And I now, is the water... You have to turn on the water... No, you just have to turn on the electricity, the pump house. 
yeah, the to get the water. Is up on the hill up there, and we feed. I showed that. Yeah, we up feed there. Off, off the hill. Well, if Todd's gonna <laughs> turn off the unhook that yeah. electric pole and stuff, is that gonna affect that? It will temporarily. Because you gotta have electricity, don't you, for the pump? But your sprinklers are on batteries. Is that right? But they won't work if the pump isn't working. So. Yeah. Okay, we, I think we've wasted enough time here talking about all this stuff. Because what are we going to do next? And pretty soon i got to get the lawnmower up here. And... He just has so much to do. And last night, <clears throat> I was ready to go to bed. I was going to bed. Well, I had to go pick asparagus, and then I, then yeah. I had to mow the lawn. And, and it was getting almost dark, and he's, I hear the lawnmower. He can't quit for nothing. Well, if I hadn't done that yesterday, I'd had that much more to do today. But you have tomorrow. You have the whole week. You don't have to get everything done in one day. You're going to kill yourself. Are well, you worried? If I don't get my work done today, then I'll have too much to do for tomorrow. No, then you have the next day. You need to take it more easy. Aren't you worried about your heart? Anyway, these strawberries over here, the Ogallala, and they're an ever, ever bare. They have one big crop during the latter part of June and July, and then they kind of die down, and then back in September, they'll come back with another crop. What is this supposed to scare away? I have all kinds of little snakes laying around. What's it supposed to scare away? It looks pretty fake. Supposed to keep the birds out of the strawberries. I know, but can't they see? Um, color and see that snakes don't come in that. Anyway, these strawberries are Ozark Beauty and they're a June bearer. They only have one crop during July. Thank heavens. And I sprayed some of these dead patches. I'm trying to kill some of this quack grass out of the lawn. Just mow it. Well, just mowing it doesn't kill it out. Oh, he heard me. See this? Some of this has been sprayed, but it just hasn't died yet. Right here. This is the quack grass in here. But look, what are these little bushes? Did you tell us these little bushes over here? What are they? Yeah, I explained those. Those are the new little uh, Canadian hassocks that I, they're kind of, they're a type of uh, honeyberry. And uh, they, I've got tags on them. Uh, Jamie, do you, Jamie, how do you, ha when you're thirsty, do you drink out of the hose up here? No, I have pop in the car. No, but have you ever drinking out of the hose? Sometimes. But do you know that that's bad for you, they say? There could well, be. that's their fault, not mine. There could be mold in the hose or bugs in the hose and you're well, drinking it. You have to have nourishment from something. You're not worried? I've been drinking out of stuff like that for 70 years and it hasn't killed me yet. So do you, and do you eat raw eggs? Cookie dough and stuff with raw eggs? Oh, here's another asparagus I haven't got. Do you? Oh, I was in college. We were clowning around and did once, but I normally don't know. Raw eggs aren't supposed to be very good for you. Okay, let me grab this asparagus here. You gotta get every single asparagus. You can't leave any behind. Well, it's all going to seed. I thought you want some to go to seed. Well, I'll let this one go, and this one's too far along now. That other one is too. I don't want to eat ones that are starting to flower. Okay, we'll let the rest of it go. Is that what it's called, flower? Well, it's just leafing out. You should get some lawn chairs up here. We don't know. We'll back the car up here and then we'll get ready to plant. Okay. Get your bucket. <clears throat> so when he was healthier, he would come up here all day long and never come home. And he had his heart attack up here by the strawberries down there. And it was a miracle that he didn't die because he had five arteries blocked. And when he went into the doctor, they didn't even let him go home after the angiogram or whatever. 
and they showed me the x-ray. I wish I would have taken a picture of it because all it did look like there, it was completely blocked. No blood could even get through, five of them. And when his son comes up here, Todd, he usually parks his trailer either over here or over here. Now one year he parked it so we couldn't drive in here. And I was mad about that, you know, he parked too close. I'm like, push it back farther. We gotta get through the gate. We're old, we wanna drive. And so, but he then if he parks up here, he has the water, but he might park down by that shed down there by his lot and get electricity. I don't know. He's going to try to get electricity down there. He doesn't have electricity up here. It's only up there at the pump house. So I don't know what he's going to do, but he comes with his wife and has two little girls. They're getting older now, but um, he is going to be building a big pavilion thing. You'd think he'd build the house first. I don't get it. Anyway, um, Jamie's building this shed. He built this shed. And it looks weird because his plan is to build off each side. So he had to have the roof tall enough so he could build carports on each side to uh, put the stuff. But we had to have this because the shed down below is the sun. We sold to the sun on his lot. And then we're going to build our house. We were right here on this. See, the fence is all the way around. And we were going to build our house right out here. And look at this view we would have. But, and we would have this whole view, panoramic view. Because Jamie has good plans. And he picked this place. And it would be all fenced from the bears and the antelope. No, we don't have that here. And, um, but we ran out of years. We're too old. And if we built here, Jamie would probably die building it. And I might, and I might too. So it is a beautiful place. But, It's like 10 miles out of town, because town is right down here. There's town. So, we're this far away. Some people like living out this far. I wouldn't. 10 miles, I don't know. It's just that you wouldn't have very many visitors. There's more bugs up here too, like mosquitoes when they come out. And here's the gate. He padlocks the gate right there. We have to because people come up here and steal things from us. All right, the wind's coming out really bad, and I know what it sounds like with the wind. So I'm going to stop this.